That's it, we're leaving civilization. We got water, fuel, food, change of oil. Well actually, before we escape civilization and head out into the great unknown, we are gonna go back a few miles to show you what seems to happen anytime two sailboats are headed in roughly the same direction. You may remember Clive and Jane from our last episode. Clive showed me how to time the tides to avoid whirlpools and rapids. After today, the two boats will split apart and head their separate ways. Sea Bear to the north towards Ocean Falls and Calypso east into the Broughton Islands in search of even more laid-back adventure. The breeze came on early, making our friendly floating house versus house race pretty interesting. The wind, funneling down the strait, picked up to 25 knots, healing us over and sending things flying down below. Up on deck, I had to re-secure the spare dinghy that was about to go to Davy Jones' locker. Not much we could do about the mess down below, and with the dinghy properly secured, we got serious about racing the sea bear. Two boats battled tack for tack up the street. Calypso, light and nimble, versus the sea bear, heavier but longer, giving us a slight advantage in the blustery conditions. We eventually parted ways, Calypso back to the islands, and sea bear headed into Port McNeil to clean up do some boat maintenance and reprovision before crossing the Queen Charlotte Sound. Boat maintenance is a very necessary evil. The fact that Port McNeil was the last town with grocery stores, restaurants, and repair shops was definitely on my mind. Phil got creative with topping off the water tanks while I changed the oil and gave the boat a good wash down. We were preparing to make the passage from the east coast of Vancouver Island, across the Queen Charlotte Sound, around Cape Caution, and up into the fjords of mainland British Columbia. The day started out with a dense morning fog that hung in the air like a wet jacket. As the day wore on, the low-lying fog eventually gave way to a high overcast. After an uneventful crossing, we approached the shore of Cape Caution. We encountered a large flock of seabirds feeding off of a bait ball. Often, predator fish like salmon push the bait up in the water column towards the surface, where the birds are waiting for their midday snack. It was all going according to nature's plan, right up until a big powerboat came out of nowhere and ran right through the middle of the hungry birds. The anchorage in Furry Cove is a special place. Comprised of several small islands linked by shell midden, it affords 360 degree protection from the weather. What's that? Yeah, mussels. Rich in shellfish, the islands were once the site of a thriving First Nations village. The Canadian government doesn't have the resources to monitor the water for toxins in remote locations like these. So they put up signs warning of paralytic shellfish poisoning anywhere the public might try to harvest.
sitting on a beach that was created by hundreds of people throwing their dinner scraps in a pile over thousands of years, it was sobering to think of the environmental problems we are facing today. That is, until I noticed some fellow cruisers getting their dinghy unstuck from the mud. That cheered me up. Ocean Falls is a ghost town tucked in amongst the fjords of Canada's west coast. A company town, it was built in 1906 to support a pulp mill. The site was chosen because of the hydroelectric potential of the waterfall at Link Lake. In 1912, the pulp mill started operating and the population grew to 250 people. It peaked at 3,500 people in 1950, before dropping back down to 1,500 people in the late 70s. Today there are around 14 full-time residents and about 14 dogs, depending on who you ask. One of the first things I did after getting the sea bear anchored was to go exploring up the river in the dinghy. The falls are impressive up close, but there's also the odd beauty of industrial decay to consider. Exploring done for the day, we turned in, getting some rest for a big adventure the next day. <laughs> and what better way to start a day and an adventure than with French toast and bacon topped off with bananas foster? This is the kind of food that keeps me going all day. probably just as surprised to catch these guys working as they were to catch us filming them.
Anyway, well done guys. It takes some serious stones to work at the top of an 87 year old dam. And I ain't looking back to the hell where I come from. I'm gonna share my soul with the love of a whole. Then the place where I Behind the dam is Link Lake and the Lost Lake Trail. We had received a few warnings from the locals about the various predators in the woods, but for some reason thought it would be a good idea to hike the trail anyway. Supposedly the area is overridden with wolves. So. Good solid stick. Hey man. John, word on the street. Word on the street? Yeah, word on the street is that there's wolves, bears, and cougars. <laughs> but suppose this place is riddled with wolves. <laughs> it's riddled with wolves is what they say. Falls Corporation. 